Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this episode I want to show how you can do some easy virtual staging using some fairly new software that I'm going to be reviewing in this video. We're going to be taking something that looks like this and turn it into this virtually staged. We're going to be seeing something along the lines of this that will get turned into this and also something like this that get turns into this. That's all virtually staged. I'm going to be reviewing some software, show the results of that, and also how to use the app, and then also how to incorporate this into your pricing structure because that's one of the things that I really liked about this particular provider of this software. The company is called Apply Design. I have a link to that down in the description for this video, as well as links to jump ahead if you want to see the other sections in this video where I'm reviewing and stepping through this particular software. It's all online. You just use a web browser, drag and drop stuff. Very easy to do and it only costs as low as $7 an image. And that's all that it costs you to upload the image. You can edit it as many times as you need to and just keep rendering that image. So very easy software to use, very easy to incorporate into your pricing structure, which is why I wanted to follow up this video at the end to show what you might be able to charge for this because you might be surprised what you can do with something that gets really good results. But does it really get good results? Now, as you know from other reviews that I've done on my YouTube channel, just because someone gives me some free gear or someone gives me some credits to use their software doesn't mean I'm gonna give them a stellar review. I've actually given some bad points to a lot of other products because I couldn't stand behind them. This is one that I can, I do give it a good review, but I wanna be able to show some caveats with this so you can make a decision if this is worth it for you to do, it is my recommendation right now for virtual staging software. So without further ado, let's dive into this to start reviewing some of the results. Then afterwards, we're going to be reviewing the app and show how the app is used and then pricing. But first, let's take a look at what this produces. So this is an ideal room as a test candidate for this particular software because it has a couple different elevations here, a little wall up here, a beam, we've got this fireplace blocking some of the furniture, and three walls that are being shown, all of which could really wreak havoc on an automated AI engine that would be trying to do some virtual staging because it's not just the placement of furniture, it's also the light and shadows. So this turned out very well. In fact, the results of it, not bad at all. So when we take a look here, we see a lot of natural shadows that came in and that's the big thing that I'm trying to find here. There's no virtual staging software that will be 100% accurate. Some are just better than others. A lot of the furniture may not look quite as natural, but once you get light and shadows across it, it becomes very realistic. Taking a look back here, we can see that with the chairs, we got shadows in a couple different directions. One that was up against here from this window, one against that wall for that window, and we've got some good shadows showing up in other places. A little bit too heavy from here coming off of this globe, so I thought that was just a little bit too much against the wall on the shadows, but still did a pretty good job picking up the light. When we get into the dining room, if you get really close, you can see that the bottom of those feet on those chairs, they don't look necessarily the best for shadows, but we still have shadows coming off of each leg different pieces of the chair and also of the table. So that looked really well. And then also the amount of light that's going across, for instance, the coffee table, it does match what's hitting the fireplace here across the pillows. So that all looks very well. Now, one of the things also to bear in mind is that I'm not a stager. I didn't color coordinate this, but the software did. And this is one of the things I really loved about the Apply Design software is it did color matching during the render process so that it would match all the furniture up. And I'm gonna show what this looked like originally in the editor in just a little bit, but let's take a look at a couple more examples and how well this software played out. Taking a look at an empty bedroom, I wanted to do something different in that we aren't gonna put the bed over here, which would be typical, and that's an easy thing for any uh, virtual staging uh, engine to be able to deal with, but what if you're shooting over the bed? And that's why I wanted to place the bed here, so I did that. 
So in the results here, this turned out pretty well. There are a few issues. So at first glance, everything looks very natural. We can see that there's a lot of light that's going across the TV coming in from here. And also we've got some dual shadows. So we've got subtle shadows from the plant here and then shadows from this uh, window coming across here. So it picked up that very well. Also on the art that I added on the wall, we can see that there is a nice reflection of the art over here. So that's picking up a reflection off of the glass and putting it into that artwork that's up against the wall. So I thought that was also a very nice added touch because that would be realistic. Same with the art that's above the bed. I put in some nightstands with some other stuff here, but when we got in really close here, you can see that there's a little bit of fabric that overlapped. And that's for me not putting the nightstand in the proper place. I could easily fix that in Photoshop afterwards, but that was actually a fault on my part with that little piece there. And I'll show you some of what this works out to in the editor. So the, I was easy to put rugs underneath of stuff, very easy to do. The chair over here I thought was fairly well done. You can see some shadows underneath of it, but one of the things you'll start noticing is some of the wood doesn't look very realistic, but this is very typical of a lot of virtual staging software. So knowing that, a lot of times picking darker woods and also having it in an area that gets a lot of light and shadows will then make it look more realistic, but, but otherwise it's just not as realistic and it will um, show a little bit of, uh, is that real, is it not? But for virtual staging software, this it's pretty about average, what you find for a lot of, pretty hard not to find those cases. But once again, if you go with the darker woods, then it's not as noticeable. Let's take a look at another example. So here's an empty dining room that's a really good test case for perspective. So one of the problems with virtual staging companies, more than virtual staging software, is that they don't scale things very well. So when we stage this, it filled up very nice and the scaling is very easy to do, which I'll show when we get to the application portion of this review. We can see once again that the wood was a little bit dull on this cabinet. Once again, that's what I was talking about in the last uh, image, and that if you don't have light directly hitting it or shadows, then it can just look a little bit, yeah, whatever. But you can see the little pieces up here, they're, they're very natural. The figgy over here, that's got plenty of good shadows that are working just properly, and the wood on the table looks stellar. Now, something you might not have noticed unless you're looking very closely right now is that even though we can see through this glass face and see the handles of the doorknob way over in here, if we look at this face here, that doesn't look natural. So it's not picking up the grass that it should be seeing on the outside. Could I fix that in post? Sure. Is it worth it? Probably not. I thought that was probably okay. I could live with that for something virtually staged. If someone complained about it, then I'd go ahead and fix it, that's fine. Another thing to bear in mind is that with more feedback and the more you use this engine, and we'll be showing that once again when I get to the application, um, view when we review that portion is that the software's AI, it learns from its mistakes so that it constantly improves over time. So the results that you're getting now will be improved as time goes on. Let's take a look at one more example. So here's a test case that I did to try to show overexposed lighting. So this was a very small apartment, new apartment building that I was shooting here recently. Tons of light streaming in against this wall. So how did it work with virtual staging? Not bad. So I put this picture up here on the wall to try to see how much light would be hitting it. Would it really start throwing the right type of shadows? For the most part it did. The shadows over here to the right are showing a little bit more from the bottom than the top because it is picking up that there's more than one window here. Didn't really deal with the wall light very well, but you can see across the picture itself, it did very well. It's just the shadow is just a little bit off, but realistically you wouldn't know that. You'd have to really be super picky. At first glance, you'd never notice that. A few little specks down here on the couch and that's also from little bits of light that were coming through the window. So tried to pick those up. That's a little annoying to me. I would probably just use a spot healing brush. The thing I really liked, let's take a look at this TV. Look at that reflection. 
That is so realistic. It picked up the, the blinds over here. You can see the little slats. It also picked up the greenery from outside. It picked up the, uh, the wall median over here. And of course it's, it's blurred just like it should be. So I really did like that. The same with the pieces that I was able to put on the uh, credenza over here. The plant looks natural. So I really was quite pleased with the results of this. Once again, nothing's ever perfect. One of the things that I screwed up on was this coffee table here should have been rotated. So nobody's sitting over here to have that cup of coffee. So I should have rotated the table so that these coffee cups were in the seating places. Anyways, those are some of the initial results. Let's start now looking at the application itself. So here's the website, Apply Design. You can see they've got their advertisement. They've also got a video for a quick start. You can see their pricing down here, $7 per image when you purchase up to 20, and it's $10 per image if you're just purchasing a few. So pretty good deal though, if you're buying 20 images. So once again, it's how many images you upload, you can render them as many times as you want, so you can keep editing. So let's go over to the application here, and what they do is you organize your addresses. So here I've got two addresses, they call them locations, 456 Awesome Road and 123 Main Street. So you can open one of these and you can add images to it any time. So here I'm gonna take a look at that family room, which is a very tough one, the one that we first did. I can go into here and I can see by hovering over any of these, I can see the render history. So I can go back and pull out the latest one, change it as I want to. So these were all different downloads, but let's go ahead and we'll select this one and we'll edit this just to show you what the editor looks like and then we'll step through a different example. So you can see that this looks a lot different than the finished image. The finished image was a lot better color coordinated, looked more realistic. This is using just a thin client in your browser to keep it very lightweight so you're not heavily processing on your CPU all the rendering. That's done on the servers back on apply design when you hit the render process. So anyways, the red, what you're seeing here, these are things that are cut off. For instance, this couch over here is behind that wall of the fireplace. The rug here cut off. Same thing here, dining room that's behind that. So what you're seeing in red, that's your indicator that this is something cut off. For instance, this picture here is a little far away from the wall. I didn't mind it though. I liked it being that close to the wall. So I left it as is. Just because it's red doesn't mean it's bad. For instance, we know that this table should be hidden back behind here. You can also then select any element and then you can go back to editing it. So you can go in here, you could remove it, you can change the size of it as you want to. You can rotate it, change the depth. And we'll step through that when I go through the example itself. But here, this gives you a pretty good view. When you're done with the process of staging this, you would then hit render. Let's take a look though at the uh, starting from scratch to so get a better idea of what's involved here. So let's go over here to 456 Awesome Road and let's select uh, this particular one. So this particular image, the render of it is this right here. So not bad, looks pretty good. Pretty good job on it from being an empty room. Let's go back here to edit it. And what we can do is start from scratch. You can see it looks a lot different than when uh, the finished product, the finished image after it was rendered. So I'm just gonna clear this as though we started with a new image. I'm just gonna go clear models, boom. It's back to the empty room. Now I put the fire in that fireplace. That was just done in my standard editing workflow. So now that we have this empty room, let's start adding something. We can add room bundles, and this is where you'd have matching furniture. So I could go over to living rooms and pick some type of matching furniture. And this would be good, then I know this stuff is probably the best to put into this particular room, but you don't have to do that. So I could select this chair, for instance, to put over in the corner. This is a rug that they would recommend. And we could do that, but you can also go over here and just select your own individual furniture. So we'll go all the way out here, go to furniture. So also notice, by the way, there was same location. So under that same location, if I want to get matching furniture, I could select it from there. But we'll go over to furniture and the world's your oyster here with a lot of different selections. First, let's start with just a sofa. So I had a sectional in there and we could put that in again if we'd like. We can find something else here. We could find just a sofa itself and see how that works up against there. For instance, we could take this one and we could just drag that into place here. Now you can also click on something and then say add. 
But here I just dragged it in, and then if you right click and spin it around, then it rotates. And we'll put it up against the wall over here. That looks good. Until it starts hitting red, yep, it went right up against the wall as far as it's gonna go. So that's really good right there, but it might look a little big. So you click on it and you just size it down to the size you want. Let's go back over here and let's put a rug underneath of it. So we can take uh, this rug and let's pick something that, uh, let's say it's this one right here. Put that underneath of it. And if it's not rotated the proper way, once again, right click and you can rotate it. So that's what I did there. We'll put this underneath of there. And that looks pretty good. Now, once again, you're seeing thin client. That's why some of these shadows aren't going to match 100%. Let's go back here to our couch, though, and let's just take that down just a notch. So that looks pretty good. Go to the rug. We'll take that down just a notch also. and Maybe move it out just a little bit more. Now, we could put a coffee table out here, but we could also put a nightstand here if we wanted to. But let's take a look at the other side of the room, a few other things we can do here to get a better idea. So we'll go back out here to Categories, and let's select uh, something for that chair that was over here. So we'll go over here to Armchairs. And I like to select something that has a little bit of a throw on it. It just gives a nice touch to it. So like we did in the last one, let's take that Cove armchair. We'll just drag that one into place there. And once again, right click, spin it around. It shows you which is front so you don't get confused on it. That looks good. We'll kind of drag it into place a little bit off frame and then I'll size it. So I'll take that down just a little bit. I'll put a rug underneath of that too. So we'll go back over here to categories, go to rugs. Now, if I wanted to make a match, I could take this rug and duplicate it, but I can also select a different rug entirely. So let's just select this one and put it underneath of there. That's eh, not quite a match. I don't like that. Let's just remove it. So we can select something else. We'll select something that kind of matches that other one. Let's go with this one down here, the Denmark rug. So we'll take that. We'll take this and size it down so it's a lot smaller. And then we can then rotate that into place. We could have used the rotate controls also. And sometimes it's nicer just to drag that into place like that. Okay, now we can put in other stuff. We wanna put a little uh, end table over here. So let's take a look at the end tables. Go over here to categories, and then you can take a look at coffee tables, which have different nightstands, uh, not nightstands, but end tables. So we'll take a look at one, and maybe this one would be nice over there. Well, let's drag it over and take a look. How does that look over there? Oops, okay, I guess that's fine. We can make that a little bit smaller, a little bit uh, overpowering. We can move it back also behind that furniture. So that seems like that would be uh, well and fine. Want a light back here. Let's go back over here to categories and go to uh, lamps. So under lamps, they have all kinds. Uh, hanging lamps, they've got standing lamps. Let's just use this particular standing lamp here. We'll drag that into place, put it behind that couch. And does that look good where we want it? And yeah, we can change the size of it too. I think that's probably good. Let's put it deeper into the room. There like that. Now, if we couldn't get it back there, you just change the room depth. So it's like goes back and you can see it's moving through the couch, getting back deeper into the room. So I can also change the horizontal placement of it. I can change the uh, vertical placement besides just the depth and of course then the rotation. So if that looked pretty good to me, it's like, that's fine. Let's just now lower that a little bit. Okay, so that looks good. Maybe not so quite so deep into the room. Okay, now that's looking pretty good. I can put something then in the corner. I could put maybe another table. I could put a plant. So under categories, they have plants. So from here, I can select some type of plant to put in that corner, a whole variety of things. Some of them that just go on uh, uh, an end table, some of them that would go into a corner. Let's take this banana plant and we'll put that into the corner over here. That's a pretty big banana plant. So let's scale that down. So we'll just make that a little bit smaller in there. That's fine. Then let's put something else just right here for now. So we'll go over here to categories and we'll select what they call the uh, sideboards, which are like credenzas and whatnot. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we can select this, uh, let's select this one here, the Roma sideboard, or maybe this one. It's a nice looking one, but we'll drag this and just see what it looks like over there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's get it up against the wall there, but it's too big. So once again, let's just size that down a little bit. And now let's put something on it. 
So now we can go over here to a category called miscellaneous. And under miscellaneous then, there's a lot of stuff we can pick from and there's little things we can put on there. So here's a little bit of decor, maybe a little uh, decor set. So we can try dragging that on there, see if that looks good on there. That's a little bit on the high side, so we'll take that down. That probably looks good right there. Anyways, let's say that this was fine. We liked it. We can see that, well, we've got some things going on here though. This particular table's running into the wall. So we'll probably want to just size it down and maybe change the depth too, so where it's not so deep into the room. So we can change that like about like there. That looks pretty good. Not bad. We can change that once again. The horizontal and depth are a little funky on this, but they'll work just fine. And then if you wanted to, you could add more. You could add a coffee table over here, maybe an end table there, but you see kind of the process. So when you're done with this, you would then hit the render button and then it'll go off and render, and then you can follow its progress and it'll alert you then when it's ready. Now, when the whole thing was done, then the finished shot looked like this. So just real quickly, I'll go through that workflow and what that means. You've probably seen diagrams like this before. Top to bottom is our timeline. You're over here with this little uh, blue computer and apply designs on the right. First thing you would do is you would upload an image that would go into one of your locations, and, but then you have to wait for apply design to do its process. So it has to process that, and divvy that up and prepare it across its various servers. Takes just a few minutes, when that's ready, then it will notify you and then you can do your virtual staging just like we did. Now that process, since it does take a little while, you might want to think about incorporating that into your workflow at the point of when you're done with a exporting an image from doing your flash ambient blending or HDR or whatever it is that you're ready to deliver to the customer. At that point, your editing workflow, upload it to apply design if you know that's going to be virtually staged. When it's ready, then you can either keep editing or you can work on virtual staging it. Either way, the next process is rendering like we did to render that image. So once that's sent up for rendering, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes or so. Um, you're notified with a little ding in the application and also with an email that it's ready. So you get notified of that. Then you can download it or you can keep revising it. Whatever you'd like to do, you can keep going through a circular process with this. But knowing this particular workflow then, you can use this to your advantage to incorporate this into your standard editing workflow. So the big question mark is, can you make money doing this? So as an add-on, this can work very well at only $7 an image for an upload, then you can render this as many times as you want. And that's the advantage to working out your pricing structure. So you, there will always be cheap alternatives online. You can go to Box Brownie and have something done for what, $24 a room, but you're gonna get the results that Box Brownie provides. Not bad results, I mean, they're good, but I felt that Apply Design, there software was better and I can provide more personalized service. So that's why there's other virtual staging companies that charge 35, 50, 60, even close to hundred dollars an image because of the type of services that come with each image. For instance, you don't have to have your realtor or so somebody else just send off that image to some other overseas third party and hope for the best when they get the image back. When you show up to photograph the property, that means that you can work with your agent to say, you know what I do? Let's do something over here for this. I'm gonna shoot this angle particularly for it. They get a more personalized service that you can then label and market as white glove to be able to work with your client to show them that you know how to stage. Now, an advantage of using Apply Design is that you don't have to worry so much about colors because it will color match the pieces that you're putting together. So immediately that makes your job easier. But the other thing with white glove and working directly with your client is that very closely with them on this instead of just shipping it overseas is that you can say that we provide for this high price up to two edits. So let's say that uh, you charge $50. Now that's gonna be about twice as much as Box Brownie, but with that you say, I provide also white glove uh, so that I'm with you and actually talking about the staging so you know the results that you're gonna get. And if you're not happy with them, then I provide one extra edit to be able to change out some of the furniture based on some of your recommendations. So putting that into your workflow then still becomes expedient. So they can get along with the first rendition of it same day or 24 hour turnaround. Other edits 
put that out to 24 hours or further. And of course that then does put a little bit of a damper on the idea that they would want more edits, but it depends on how your clients feel about some of that. So you can always test the waters by first, don't price match what somebody else is doing. Don't just do uh, some other price, oh, $15, $25, because somebody else is doing it. Charge more, definitely charge more. Sometimes a little bit more, but people will pay more for something that is not just better quality, but also more convenient. So think about that as you're structuring this into your real estate photography offerings. Anyways, I hope this video is useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.